the Queen wanted Prince Charles to ditch Camilla after his divorce to Princess Diana, a royal author has claimed. It took the Duchess of Cornwall years to earn the respect of the Queen, according to royal expert Penny Junner. While Camilla and Prince Charles met in the 1970s, they both went on marry other people, with Camilla tying the knot with Andrew Parker Bowles in 1973, and Charles marrying Lady Diana Spencer in 1981. But their relationship was referenced by Princess Diana, who infamously said, there were three of us in this marriage, so it was a bit crowded. Eventually Prince Charles and Princess Diana went through a very public separation in 1992, divorcing in 1996. Writing in the mail, Penny said, it was nothing personal. She Queen had been very fond of Camilla in all the years she had been married to Andrew Parker Bowles, but it was Camilla who had been responsible, wittingly or not, for all the disasters that had befallen Charles since his marriage. The Queen didn't hold Camilla in high regards, it's claimed, and wanted her son to ditch her. But the heir to the throne is said to have insisted she was a non-negotiable part of his life. Penny said, the Queen had wanted her gone before Diana's death and felt no differently after it. Her private secretary, Sir Robert Fellows, who was also Diana's brother-in-law, strongly reinforced her view. Following Princess Diana's tragic death in 1997, aged 36, the pair put their relationship on hold out of respect. But as time went on, they rekindled their relationship and Prince Charles, now 70, began to gradually introduce Camilla into the public eye. The Queen still refused to acknowledge their relationship, reportedly refusing to attend events where Camilla was attending. In 1999, her standpoint hadn't thawed, with Penny adding, that didn't mean that, more than a year on from Diana's death, she had changed her mind one iota about Camilla. The Queen still wanted her out of her son's life. Eventually, she accepted the couple and the Queen finally met Camilla, attending an engagement where she was present. In 2000 the Queen, Prince Charles, and Camilla shared a table at Charles's Highgrove home, celebrating the former King of Greece, King Constantine's, 60th birthday. As time went on, the Queen and the British public warmed to Camilla, and Prince Charles finally married her in 2005. The Queen and Prince Philip didn't attend the ceremony, only arriving for the service of prayer and dedication held at the St. George's Chapel at Windsor Castle, and they later stayed for the reception. While technically the Princess of Wales, Camilla doesn't use the title out of respect to Princess Diana, instead styling herself the Duchess of Cornwall, Princess Charles's secondary title. Prince Charles once revealed that he'd got his marriage to Princess Diana all wrong in a letter to a friend. Charles and Diana suffered an arduous marriage which eventually ended in 1996. Although the two managed to prolong their partnership for 15 years, the relationship got off to a bad start. In a remarkable interview, Charles and Diana uncomfortably announced that they were very much in love or as the prince announced, whatever love means. Despite Charles's comments, he still went into the marriage hoping to fall in love with his new bride eventually. However, as royal biographer wrote in her book, Prince Charles, The Passions and Paradoxes of an Improbable Life, Charles eventually realized that his marriage had been doomed from the start. Ms. Bedell Smith wrote, pressured and panicked, he had rushed into a decision before he was ready, understanding little about the rosy-cheeked girl of 19 who gave him beguiling sidelong glances. At age 32, he should have known better. How could I have got it all so wrong, he wrote six years later in an anguished letter to a friend. Although at first glance, Diana had seemed a perfect match for Charles, in reality, it was a marriage that presented many barriers. The two had a 12-year age gap between which according to Ms. Bedell Smith was essentially unbridgeable. Moreover, the two had no intellectual connections or even any common friends to help them traverse the early and difficult stages of their marriage. The royal biographer also concluded, Charles had been through the ups and downs of the formative years of early adulthood, pushing to find a role for himself and channel his passion into action. Diana was still an adolescent. From Diana's perspective, 
she once termed the early stages of her marriage as the Dark Ages. With her popularity soaring, Charles began to feel insecure at the disproportionate adoration that his wife received over him. Although their initial relationship was rocky, there was one aspect of their life that did bring the two together. According to Ms. Bedell Smith, the pair bonded over the birth of William. While there were plenty of nannies and nurseries for the royal couple to use, both parents were incredibly attentive. As the author wrote, Diana and Charles found some happiness in their caring for William. Both Diana and Charles were determined to be more hands-on than their own parents had been, even with the presence of a nanny in the nursery suites in London and Gloucestershire. Ms. Bedell Smith added, Diana took her mothering seriously. Racing down the hallway to the nursery when she heard her son's cries in the night. Touchingly, Charles too took more time to connect with his son in light of Philip's detached relationship with him. The royal biographer wrote, Charles was eager to spend more time with William than Philip had with him, and he pitched in to bathe his son.